You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. And I do know that you can love a woman, take care of a woman, um, truly have somebody you care about, and then have other women. And you don't have to be a piece of shit for it. And I think there's a lot of guys out there that are living in a whole lot of pain and hurting women because they don't understand that. I'm in Dubai or Miami and some girl that clearly has her titties and ass all over the internet DMs me. Bro, that's, I'm not going to fall in love with that girl anyway. And I feel like guys that fall in love with girls that are marketing on the internet like that are pretty weak in the first place because they can't see the world for what it is either. Um, I think that if a girl takes a guy seriously, you should at least have her log in. And I know that sounds super controlling and insecure and all those things, but man, look, I'll tell you another thing. If, if I'm dating a girl and I go on her page and all I can see is cleavage and, and ass and all that, bro, that's marketing, dude, straight up. And if you can't get a grip on that with your girl, bro, she's, she's going to leave you anyway. So let's say, let's say, I, let's say I had a main chick, right? And let's say I actually showed her to the world. All the girls that wanted her spot would attack her by calling her a whore, you know, or a slut, or I can't believe I would never. Yeah, you would, bitch. Yeah, you would. Ben, we're on. And today's yeah. guest, we've got Playboy millionaire Justin Waller. How are you? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Is it Waller? Waller? Waller. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it right? Yeah, W A L L E R. Yeah. So, again, a man, very controversial friend with Andrew Tate. Like, yeah. Not stopping. Yeah. Not backing down from it either. So, how are you, brother? I'm, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Good to be back in London, I think. So it's, it's always, uh, I guess, hit or miss in London. It's like, am I going to have a good time? Someone going to try to stab us? Like, what are we doing? So well, I heard the st- sirens just now. So how do you like London? Yeah, I love, I love the people. Obviously, it's, the crime's rising. A lot of people are struggling now. So it's kind of ruthless for people to try and yeah. get money to survive. But all in all, the people I know, the, the places I go, everybody I love, they're friendly. Yeah. You're always going to get the odd asshole who right try something but that's everywhere in the world i guess yeah that's been my experience too man i've really enjoyed it uh the only time i've ever really gotten upset in london is i was in a pub with uh sterling cooper last time and he's traveled a lot like a whole lot and they ended up cutting me off at the bar and i was like singing and hugging people and stuff like that and he goes bro he's like sometimes bro when you're a big dude in the bar and they don't think they control you they'll cut your ass off and so i got super mad about that but other than that man, i've had a blast in london it's been good before we get into all the mad stuff i always go back to the start of my guests where Let's you grew it. up and how it all began yeah i grew up in south louisiana so um not not much to say my dad was a cotton farmer um he, my grandfather he left world war ii and he farmed cotton so my my father followed suit uh didn't really work out he met my mom uh they were working at mcdonald's in vicksburg mississippi or Mr. Cook, one of the two, um, that that didn't really go too well. So there was a split household. It, it got um, kind of kind of a violent household growing up. It was it was nothing. It was nothing to get your ass handed to you. Pretty good actually. On the on the mom side of things, um, we'd meet at the police station, go our separate ways, and uh, from there, man, um, growing up, I wasn't the best in school. Actually, I failed sixth grade. Um, it's just one of those things, man. I ended up going to college to play football, and I finished uh, in 2009. So, yeah, just south Louisiana. I grew up most of my life there, so it's an interesting place. Do you think it affects you as a kid when you see beatings and getting beat yourself to who the person you become later in life? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think I would trade anything for my childhood at all. In fact, I think it's very much a gift, man. I think um, I think a lot of people live insulated, think nothing can happen to them. So they, they, they talk a lot. I, f- I feel like, um, in fact, if I ever feel like I'm ever going to get in any kind of altercation, I get really quiet because I just, you know, you know, the repercussions of it, you know, uh, some of those neighborhoods that we grew up in, man, it was just, it was always popping off, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's, if it was quite London, but it, it was definitely something that wasn't uncommon in any way. 
at all. Like when, when this bus parks, you know, when the school bus parks is going down, you know, or, or just whatever in the neighborhood. So yeah, man, I, I think that, um, I think that it gives you a realistic view of, um, what can happen if you talk too much. You know, I think some men, some men don't have that reality that they think they can say whatever they want. And, uh, I'm certainly not that way. I take that subject actually very seriously, um, as a result of, of that. Cause I've just been there a few times and, uh, you know, there's, there's repercussions around running your mouth, man. So it's. You've got the playboy lifestyle now. You've got the fancy suits, the big yeah. watches, private planes, big cars, older women. Yeah, yeah. What were you like at college? I was like the same thing, really. Um, you know, I dated the prettiest girl in school. You know, she ended up winning Miss Louisiana. I uh, I had my first I had my first run ins at the end of high school and and at the end of college with heartbreak. The only two times I've ever had my heart broken is because I left a girl because I wanted to cheat. I didn't have a problem with the girl. Didn't have we weren't fighting. We didn't have issues. I just thought I didn't know there was another way. So what I would do is I would leave a girl that I cared about. Because I thought that I couldn't, you know, have both of those things. And I, I think I spent a lot of a lot of time and heartbreak in, in my younger life over that particular subject. But yeah, man, I was a playboy to the max. To the max. I just didn't have any money. I just did it with football pads. You know. So what position did you play? I played tight end. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. How how does that affect you? Like having your heart broke, like probably having someone beautiful girl, someone who loves you, mm -hmm. probably feels secure at that point, coming from a volatile home as well. Like, yeah. how does that affect you when you fuck something up that where you thought the love was pure and honest? Well, yeah, man. So like for me, I wanted to be a good person, you know. So what I would do is I would break up with the girl before I even did anything. So. Being from the South, man, everybody was really religious. So I went through a really heavy phase my senior year in college where I tried to pray my way out of feeling the way that I felt. And I think that really fixed me in a lot of ways, man, because I would I would like go to church and shit. And, and then I'd go home and be like, God, please don't let me do this. Please don't let me do this. Because I had these feelings inside of me, you know what I'm saying? And I loved the girl. I didn't have a problem with the girl, you know? And she cried. I mean, like, dude, she was like throwing up on the floor when I broke up with her. And it broke me in a lot of ways because I had feelings for the girl. I just wanted to fuck the soccer player or the cheerleader or the girl on the volleyball team. And I didn't want to leave my girl, but I didn't think I could get both of those things, especially growing up in the South. Man, I thought I'd go to hell for that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like where I grew up. So, um, Man, I had to learn the hard way. It was really, really rough on me. It was probably, I, I say all the time, I'd rather physically get my ass whipped than feel the way, you know, like a legitimate heartbreak feels like when you actually like really, really love a girl. Because I think love is real. I think you can love a woman. Um, now, I think that you can love a woman and sleep with other women and still love that woman. You know, absolutely. I don't think I'm the first person to say that won't be the last one. I don't think I've said anything special. Uh, same thing about the tough childhood, by the way. I don't think that's anything particularly special. I think a lot of people see that. But that particular breakup right there, it was super painful. And it, and it stopped me from believing that I would ever get into a, a, a relationship again, any, any kind of. So I would keep them at arm's distance. So I didn't have to even worry about getting myself in a situation where I was in that you know, do I want to stay? Do I want to go? Because I didn't see the option. In fact, Myron said it earlier. It's like a lot of guys, they don't even know that that's an actual play. They don't know that that's an actual option. And that's why I always say, you're doing God's work, Myron. You know, because if a guy doesn't know that, then, you know, how can how can he think there's any other way? He's either going to be a piece of shit or he's going to be a good man and be, and a lot of times I think you you end up being miserable. You know, see for men, do you think we try and protect ourselves, like you say, keep girls at arm length? Because I've lost a lot of people in my life, but there's no worse feeling than having a broken heart. Like no, I've man. fucked girls over in the past. I was yeah. in prison. I was a drug dealer. I I done a lot of bad shit, but people yeah. loved it. Girls loved it at that time. And yeah, I used to when you have your heart broke as a kid. Which look, I believe men are soft as well. As much as we can play the alpha male and be strong, Straight and, up. and yeah. like, I agree we're with that. soft as shit as well when it comes to love and, and women. For me personally, it was to try and protect myself like you, keep them at arm's length, because I know what it felt like when you rip your heart out, and it's partly because of your own self-sabotage. Right. But when you become from that relationship, when you try and kick on, did that 
jeopardize every other relationship in your life? At that time, before I knew there was a better way. So a lot of times I think like what happened was I was really just being a bitch. But I really did, I didn't know there was another way. And I think a lot of men that think they're cowards, are particularly over this subject, it's not really that they're cowards so much as that they don't have the consciousness to understand how female nature works. They don't have the consciousness to understand that they can actually be who they really want to be inside. Because a lot of the pain I went through in that particular situation or in that situation in general was the feeling that I had hurt somebody I cared for. You know what I'm saying? You like you said, like we always think we're tough and all these other things. Yeah, we do, and we are. And and I I think the definition of a man is a man that can hold a baby and slit a throat in the same day. You know, so he 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 is secure enough in himself he can hold the baby. But if he's got a slit a throat, he's gonna go ahead and do that as well with with no with no stopping. You know, like full full send on that. But the particular situation I was in, I didn't see another way. And I would have much rather that girl have just broken up with me just because we had parted ways than me feel like I absolutely crushed her and then didn't get what I want on either side. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, I I, um, I definitely think you can love a girl. I definitely think that guys can have a heart as well. But I do think that they need to keep the rigidity in them, especially when it comes to the realities of the world. And, and so that's why I think educating yourself on women is so important. What did you do after college? After college, I went on a fucking tear, bro. <laughs> yeah, As man. you do. Yeah, dude. I mean, you have to. But I mean, it cost me the, you know, the 18 months or the two years, just like anybody else that gets wrecked. You know, normally that takes a little while and, and you'll do it. But, you know, you still have those feelings of, you know, loss or whatever, just like anybody else, you know. So you just went kind of blow things out your system. College was over. Single. But what were you doing for work? Man, actually... I graduated college in 2009, so there were no jobs, man. So unfortunately, I had to go dig ditches for this company called Austin Bridge and Road. It was in a little town called Bastrop. They were doing a, uh, a highway expansion, and there was no jobs, man. So I was digging ditches for like 15, 16 bucks an hour, and um, that job ended. I got laid off. I went back home. I uh, started doing backyard buildings during the day or heading out resumes during the day, and I waited tables at Texas Day Brazil at night. So during the daytime, I'm going and trying to get a job, trying to get a job, and then and, and then at night, you know, I was waiting take, tables at TDB. How so, long were you doing that for? Uh, about six, eight months, yeah. What I do is I would, I would take my resume to uh, people's offices all the time. That's actually how I got a job. I ended up going to this place like four or five times. I've told the story a bunch of times, but long story short, I went there enough times they knew I was going to keep coming. So uh, there was a uh, there was a hospital they were building in Baton Rouge, and there's job trailers out there. And um, I would go in there and like, hey, can I, you know, can I see the boss or whatever? And the lady's like, son, you know, I can't do that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, come back a couple of days later. Hey, can you know? Maybe I can see him today. She's like, you know, I can't. I'm, yes, ma'am, fine. I think it was the third time I came in there. She goes, you know what? Just stay right there. So I sat down. Some old, angry-looking, fifty-something-year-old white man, construction guys. You, Justin? I'm like, yes, sir. So come with me. So go in the back. Plops down in his chair. Leans back. He said, "Give it to me." And I'm all like, you know, like sliding into him. He looks at. It, he looks at me. He looks at. It, he looks at me. He flops it on the table. He goes. So you mean to tell me you've come in here and I know you've been in here because I've heard about this three times to see the boss on a $40 million hospital project to interrupt my day and everything I'm doing. I'm like, yes, sir. And he goes, I like that shit. And he gave me a job. So uh, I was actually making per diem and stuff. What's that? Per diem is like when they pay you for being out of town. And uh, and I didn't need I didn't need the money, man. I'd never made this much money. I was probably making about like, 60 65 grand a year you know and i was used to living on you know nothing so what i did is i went to the bank because i knew to get a contractor's license and to have my own business because that's what i'd always wanted i had read, read rich that poor at my junior year of college so what i did is i went to the bank and um i set the bank account up where when my check came it sent like 80 percent of it to this other account because you have to have a net worth of ten thousand dollars and me and nobody in my family, you could add us all up and not out of old money. So uh, I did that. I finally saved up money, enough money and I went and took the contractor's license test for residential. 
And I took the $10,000, I moved it to another bank and went and applied for the commercial test with the same money. And that'll be 12 years ago in March. So. And that's how your life is that's, that's living how, the now from that moment? Yeah, from that moment. So I uh, started off with like three or four guys putting up steel buildings in backyards, like 30 by 40s, a little 1,200 square foot, not much bigger than this flat. And uh, now got over 130 men, trucks all over the country, cranes everywhere, um, building Costco's, airplane hangers, Walmarts, Targets, you know, just big steel structures. Where did you get that drive? From that age, did you know what you wanted to do and I, I, to achieve? Or was it I, just for me? The the particular thing was consciousness. Like I didn't know anything. You know, the only the only way we knew how to make doctor money was in boots. You know, I didn't come from a neighborhood where there was like doctors and lawyers and shit around. So um, the only way I knew that I could make good money was in construction. You know, that's why I did construction management. I'm sure if I'd have, if I'd have, if my dad or my you know my parents were together, my stepdad was you know he was around and shit. He did metal buildings, so I was literally a redheaded stepchild. I would go to job sites at like 13 and like pack sheets. So when I, I wasn't even big enough to pick them up, I try to pick the panels up, and the wind would blow, and I just try to push it up against the building so I could hand it up to them. Um, it's, it was the only consciousness I had as far as drive goes. Man, I don't think I'm in like just red blooded American. I just want to do well, man. I knew that there, I knew that I had to find a way to make money. I always took care of my fitness. Um, I didn't know much about style or or game or anything like that. Like a lot of a lot of my friends in this space, like Sterling, you know, they 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 learned a lot of PUA. I wasn't even aware that shit was available. So to me, man, we would um, actually we'd go to like country bars. I don't think I've ever said this to anybody. So when I was in high school, we used to get into these. Bar- you ever heard of like a honky tonk? Yeah, yeah. So it was like bar room, and it's like it'd be bar room brawls, and we'd be dancing with women, to country music, and shit like that. It's actually where I learned to dance to country music. So even to this day, I got, I love to dance. If there's country music playing, I always say I don't care if she's eighty or two eighty. I just want to dance. You know, because I always found that if you dance with the ugly girl, the pretty girls would like you because they, you look like a good dude. And uh, that's how I'd scoop them up. So I danced with her fat friend first. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> so how does a man who college football believes in love, yeah, then working his ass off to be a self-made millionaire to then becoming a player? But because uh, it's night, night and day. Yeah. But to then, how, when when was the transition for you to start? Was that when the money comes? Attention comes nah, with it. You know, it wasn't. It was really for me, man. It was a war room in a lot of ways. It was Andrew and Tristan for me. Uh, and and then in addition, Sterling. See, because I, I knew who Myron and Walt were. I knew who Rolo Tomasi was. I knew who Richard Cooper was. What I would do is when I had a girl that I liked and I had to break up with her because she was getting close to that ultimatum conversation, I would tell her to go ahead and go our own way because I never wanted to live in a lie. I never want to live in a lie. So what I would do is I validate how I felt about it by getting reinforced by watching content of people that are now my friends pretty much, you know, um, I didn't know how to handle the guilt. Guilt really had a grip on me. And that makes complete sense because a woman's not going to kick your ass. She's not going to fight you. She's going to try to make you, she's going to say, you need to man up, you know, or I thought you were this kind of man or, or, you know, the Bible says this or whatever it is. So guilt really gripped me very hard through my early adulthood, you know, even up until maybe three years ago, you know, it really was an issue for me because I want to be a good person. I do believe in being kind to people. I do believe that you can hurt other people. And that's why I would always tell the truth after that college breakup, because I never lied to that college girl. I just left her. I never even gave myself an opportunity to tell her the truth. I just knew that it wasn't going to fly, so I just left. And it cost me, but it was good for me. You ever get stung or you get hurt in some way, and you're like, you know what? I really learned my lesson that time. I had to take the hit twice. You know, same thing happened to me with my high school girlfriend, actually. You know, so I had that rep. And and, and from there, I said, you know, I'll never lie again. You know, even because I kind of lied by omission, by not even telling them, I'm like, look, this isn't going to work. I got to go what's wrong? We don't fight. We don't, you know, it's like, I didn't want to be like, well, really, I just want to fuck other girls. You know, I just did. I wasn't in a place where I could say that. And then when in adulthood, when I got to a place where I could, 
then then I would get attacked with the guilt. But I did I didn't have anything to counteract it. But really, like red pill channels like Myron and Walt, Cooper, you know, those guys. And I was watching Richard Cooper and I and I heard Andrew talking to Cooper. And I feel I felt like I'd been saying those things for five years, ten years. You know, I had felt that way, but he was saying it out loud. And I was like, God damn, he's saying it on the internet. Like that is exactly how I feel about it. And um I really got to a place after spending some time with them where it's like it all absolutely made sense completely. And then I dug more into, you know, all the other guys as well. And just I've never felt more level about us about that subject in my entire life. You know? And and I do know that you can love a woman, take care of a woman, um, truly have somebody you care about and then have other women and you don't have to be a piece of shit for it. And I think there's a lot of guys out there that are living in a whole lot of pain and hurting women because they don't understand that. How many girlfriends do you have at the moment? I I do well. <laughs> I do well. Yeah, I do well. Does the money play a part in that? Or how do you, what do you think it is that separates a man who has many women to a man who struggles to get women? You know, I think it might change the level of woman you can get. I think it might, um, I think it might, you know, I think that you could take, you could take a substantial amount of my money away from me and put me in any city in America that's not LA or Miami. And I would absolutely murder that city. You know, give, give me 80, a hundred grand. I do just fine. But I've also taken care of style and fitness and I'm tall and um, I'm handsome and everything. And everybody jokes and calls me a Chad and shit. But you know, I think there's a version of me that, uh, is 30, 40 pounds overweight, that punches a clock every day, that doesn't make good money, that does not get women the way this current version of me is. I think we all have that opportunity to to not maximize what we were given. I see tall guys all the time. They'll be, I, I, I'll be in line at like, I'll be back home or something, be standing in line at Walmart. Uh, and I'll look over and there'll be some guy in like plant clothes, like that fool, you know, fire retarded suit and shit. 6'2", scraggly ass looking beard, fat as fuck, jay blue eyes. I'm like, that motherfucker, if he lost that weight, he would fucking slay it. Glad his fat ass doesn't, more for me. I don't care. But I see I see that shit all the time, man. It's like, there's wasted talent. You know, all the time, all these guys, you know, they think, they think that just because, you know, they're not Brad Pitt that they can't get women. I, women, I don't think women care about, I do think women care about looks. But uh, uh, I think Andrew says this. I say, you can either be handsome or you can look scary. So you have the option because you can be big and strong and maybe a little ugly. But if you do well and men respect you and, and men follow you and, and you're confident and there's, there's too many beautiful women out there for you to have an excuse not to be able to do it. Do you think confidence plays a big part in absolutely. attracting women? Yeah, absolutely. Just owning it, walking right, believing yeah. in yourself. Yeah. And you know what? I think I've always had that. I've always had a little bit of that uh, that swagger about me. I think money amplifies it, if I'm being completely fair. Because it's not like, okay, well, give me a box I've not checked. You know, especially especially when you're dealing with a 10. Especially when you're dealing with a girl that you know is also probably talking to the forward for, for some basketball team or talking to some football player or something like that. You know, you're like, okay, well, I at least make, you know, I mean, it might not be Tom Brady money, but like it's NFL money for sure, you know. <laughs> And, you know, so I, um, I, I think money can amplify your confidence in a way, um, but I don't, I don't think it's everything. No, not at all. I think they see your lifestyle and they don't even think about money. They think about fun. What do you, you think know? about relationships now? I think, I think that if you can have honesty and then if, if you are the man that, that women want to be with that you can live in truth and tell the truth and she'll take that deal happily so much so that she'll defend you against her family and friends. Do your girlfriends know that what you do? I don't, like, I don't like any of them. And straight up? Straight up. What do you say to them? I say, uh, it depends. It depends who, who it is. Um, but I basically will just tell them like, yo, look, I don't believe in monogamy, you know, and I, and, and we'll have the back and forth and, you know, they'll say, well, you know, I don't think that's fair. I say, I completely understand. Um, life is not fair. There's a lot of things that aren't fair. Because a lot of times it's emotions 
they, they, it's emotionally doesn't feel good. They know you're right. They know they know if any man, man could, he would have a woman he loves, that he, he would have kids that he could tuck in at night, be a good father, be a good husband, sleep with women when he felt like it, and go home and hold his wife at night. And and really not even feel a thing outside of like sex sex for men a lot of times i know this sounds horrible but like it's like do you want tacos or burgers you know like that's it's literally a flip of a coin like that now who you love is a completely different scenario you want you want to like you want them with you on on holidays you want to meet your family you want to you know go lay by her on the couch on thanksgiving you know, you want to find out what her dreams are and make some of those things come true. Take her on trips. So you you want to spend quality time with her. You want to you want to give her children. You know, things like that. When I'm in Dubai or Miami and some girl that clearly has her titties and ass all over the internet DMs me, bro. That's I'm not gonna fall in love with that girl anyway. And I feel like guys that fall in love with girls that are marketed on the internet like that are pretty weak in the first place because they can't see the world for what it is either. What do you look for in a girl? In what girl? Anyone. What would you look for? What's that? So different different girls provide different things, right? So if there's a, if there's a good girl that you can tell that she's a wholesome, good person, like truly a good person, and you can respect her on some levels. One thing that I, I respect in a deep way is, let's say I have that conversation with a girl about monogamy how the world actually works etc and she can see it and acknowledge it i really really respect that because i'm like this girl can see the world for what it actually is and i, I really respect that and then the girls that are clearly let's say i'm in dubai and i meet a girl and i'm like what do you do here and she's like oh i invest in crypto and i look at her instagram and i'm like well okay well bullshit so she's a sugar baby the man that's paying her way is probably 60 years old. She would rather hang out with me because I'm closer to her age. And she's just praying to God I'll fall in love with her so I can take her away from the old man, you know. And so I'll play that game and then go about your business and I'll go, you know, hang out with my guys or whatever. Do you still enjoy sex? Do I still enjoy sex? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. But I, I tell you this, though. I pass on way more sex than I actually, you know, take girls up on. How so? I'm lazy about it, you know. I um I pass on it a lot just because, man, I'm fucking busy, and and I um I guess I guess at some point once you've done certain things with certain level of of girl, it's not as important as like I don't. You know that feeling when you're like 18 years old and it's like you want to have to like it's like coming out of you. Like, you're like, yeah, I want to get, like, you just, you want to sleep. With now it's just like, uh, like, it'd be cool if she flaked because I'll just go to sleep, you know? It's so, it's it's different in that way for me. Um, I won't say I'm over it, but it's just, it's not top of my list. What do you think society is now with relationships? Do you think a lot of people are struggling? As I had the boys on earlier and they were saying the majority of women now cheat more than men, like, it's sad to think that people are struggling to find relationships, they're struggling to stay in relationships. Why do you think that is? I think Instagram wrecked it. I think Instagram wrecked the whole thing. It's a thing. dating website, huh? Yeah, it's definitely a dating website. Um, I think that if a girl takes a guy seriously, you should at least have her log in. And I know that sounds super controlling and insecure and all those things, but man, look, I'll tell you another thing. If If I'm dating a girl... And I go on her page and all I can see is cleavage and and ass and all that. Bro, that's marketing, dude. Straight up. And if you can't get a grip on that with your girl, bro, she's she's gonna leave you anyway. So for me, I'm not I think Instagram has really ruined uh relationships in a lot of ways. And it's and it's kinda like kind of you know fresh mentioned this earlier, was talking about putting your girl in the wrong environment. She could be a good girl when you start out. But if she is in the club and people are just approaching her, approaching her, approaching her, telling her how pretty she is, and you've been in a relationship for a year and a half, and it's starting to get a little stale, or you know, or you know, you're working hard, and she feels like she's not getting the attention she needs, well, she can just go on her Instagram and get that attention from a guy who's probably at some some way trying to be on your level and giving you know that girl more attention than you are. So I I think Instagram ruins a lot of it. To be honest, because what what was it before that? 
it was Facebook. Okay. And then before that, it was just, it was the people in your neighborhood. You might, bro, you might see a, a pretty girl at the grocery store, you know, once every two or three weeks. And then you might not see that girl again for six months or a year, you know? Um, and I, I think that, I think that temptation's even there for men. And I don't think men need the extra encouragement because I think men are generally more motivated than women in that area, regardless. But fuck, man, you can't, you can't open your phone without seeing every girl in Europe right now who, who wants to be in a bikini when you open your feed. You Do know? you ever see yourself settling down in the future with one woman? In what regard? Just being faithful to the one in future, 10 years, 20 years. Yeah, so I think I, I, don't, I don't look at faith, faithfulness and loyalty in, in the way of monogamy. I look at it, hey, I made this commitment to you. I'm committed to you that you, I'm going to give you the best life that you've ever had. You know, I'm going to make sure that you see the world, you have a wonderful life, you don't have to worry about anything, you get to raise your own children. You know, to me, that's a man being loyal to a woman. Um, to sit here and act like I will never sleep with another woman again after I fall in love is, I think, I think it'd be, um, I think it would be me being full of shit, you know, and I don't think any man would really want to do that. I think men that do that women women mistake men's ill inability to get other women for loyalty and i think that's a big mistake that people make i'm not doing anything that any other man would not do if he could in fact i've just done it to such a level when you were talking about like riding around in suits and jets and money and and fitness and all this stuff i put myself in a position to earn all those things so i can actually look a girl in the eye and tell her the truth and although she might not like it she will take it and she'll be happy with it because number one i'm not a fucking liar i, I found that women hate a coward so if i'm all of those things that she loves and she already knows men want to do it and i tell her the truth I think you, uh, even I have been shocked at how many women consistently say, you know what, whatever you want. Okay. What was it like when you started making serious money? Like, how was that feeling? Did you, or was it just an over, because it wasn't an overnight thing. Like, did you see a change in yourself or were you still the same person? Because money's power, especially in this day and age. Yeah, man, you know, it's weird because it doesn't matter how well I do, that voice in my head is still there. You know, like if there's if there was something that I had to reflect on myself that I need to work on, it seems like the more money I make and it's and it goes more and more year after year after year, that voice in my head is it's never enough. You could have done this. You should have done this. You should have more real estate. You should have more. You should have done crypto earlier. You know, if you would have pivoted the business model, it would have exploded fast. You know, it's that's that's something for me that it doesn't go away. And it's also probably my biggest fear that it does. So um, what has changed for me is I think I look at money as a tool to get things done and a tool to get things done with speed. But um, as far as who I am as a person, I'm very much the same person. I, I still go to when I'm home, man, I still dude. I just want to eat a rotisserie chicken for dinner and go to sleep man if i see a shirt in walmart or target or some shit like that man i will buy that shirt and i will wear it on a podcast like i don't i don't care in that way if that makes sense when are you at your happiest when i feel like i'm growing yeah man when i feel like what i feel like man i'm making some progress right now that's what makes me really really happy um in fact i think the most dangerous thing in life is that you get to the top of a mountain without somewhere else to go when did you andrew know? take him into your life Andrew, I think I joined the War Room in 2019. Um, and I met him for the first time in Las Vegas. So I met him in Las Vegas. Me and Tristan really kicked it off. We started hanging out. And um, yeah, we. I think the first trip we went on must have been, uh, must have been, Odessa a couple years ago we went to Odessa there's a big war room event there and then we went to Dubai uh, to see um, our buddy Shooter for his birthday and uh, actually it was Shooter's birthday was in Odessa so yeah about two or three years ago how's the relationship now bro I talk to him every day and what yeah. do you think about him being cancelled I think he'll win anyway 
I think that I think that being attacked is a sign of, of greatness. I feel like if you get attacked, that means you're doing something so big that people feel like, like they want to stop you. I don't suspect that he'll be stopped in any way. He'll have my support to the end. Um, I'm, I'm very foot on the gas about that in regards to him. I push the war room every day on my platform. And uh, I do think it's the best thing a young man could do or any man could do in his life um, to to make it better, to become more worldly, to have a better grip on a situation with women, to have a better grip on a situation with money, to just see the big picture of life. I think it's I think it's one of the best things a man could do. What is the war room for people who don't know? The war room is a group of guys that push each other and kind of forge each other through through fire to become better men in every way, in all categories. Everything I just said, money, finance, style, networking, um, the ability to look like you belong in a room full of high net worth individuals, the ability to uh, sell. the there, There's little things, it just to, down to the smallest things, real estate. There's a guy the other day, he, was, he had this his situation with a client he was trying to close and they were trying to get a price breakdown. And there was like four or five of us with multi-million dollar companies that jumped in and talked him through that. This is just we're just there for each other in every way, and at the same time, we'll we'll cuss each other up and down if somebody's fucking up. And I think that's what love really is. I think real love has polarity to it. You know, um, like if I really care about you, and you're screwing up, or if I'm really screwing up, and you really care about me, you're not just gonna pat me on the back and say, "Hey, man, it's okay," and wait till I leave and be like, "Justin's fucking up." You're gonna say, "Hey, man, hey." You're fucking up. I really care about you. Quit doing that shit. That's what the war room is. How do you get a girl? Do you have everybody's got chat up lines or strategies? Like how how do you approach a girl? A girl? Yeah. Bro, okay, so I think there's phases to it where it's like in the beginning, when you when you're trying to get a girl, I think the best thing to do is to be in good shape. You know, as a young man particularly. Then while when you're getting in shape, I, I think the best thing to do like in your 20s is to be in good shape and kind of be on that mission. Because I, I believe that girls bet on horses they think will win. And I know that sounds kind of kind of um, transactional, but in a lot of ways, I think hypergamy says, OK, he's in good shape and he's clearly working hard. He's a winner. He's not sitting at home playing video games all day, smoking weed or whatever. Right. So I think that's in the beginning, how you, how you basically get women. But I don't think that you should get a long-term girlfriend in your twenties. I think you should study female nature to, to the max degree and kind of sample these situations and try these things out and be aware and consciousness of female. Nature so you can see things as they're happening. And then at some point you become a guy of status and then it just gets really, really, really fucking easy. In my opinion. Um, I think any guy, any guy that's not a Chad can get his fitness together, can get his money together, can get style and have confidence, and will have zero issues with women. I think you absorb women more than you chase women. What's a high value man to you? So, first of all, I want to say something for clarity. I hate the word high, like I hate high value. I hate alpha male. I hate I hate all that shit. I know it's a placeholder, um, but to me, it's it's a man. He knows who he is. He's taking care of his business and, and his finance, his fitness, his health, his style. He He's able to look somebody in the eyes, have a real conversation with them. He's completely open and willing to be his self. I even think to some degree, a, a man that's of very high stature, it can even be vulnerable because he's not scared of somebody taking advantage of that because he knows that he can handle himself and give someone repercussions that if he trusts them enough to show some kind of vulnerability, if they try to take advantage of it, he'll make them pay, you know, like a truly confident man. Why do you think a lot of boys, men are struggling just now like with not just mental health, but struggling to get relationships? I was speaking earlier, one in further men are virgins that, but suicide rates through the roof. Like, why do you think yeah. men are really struggling on this planet at the moment? Well, you know, I think that they've lived a lot of, especially the young guys, they're living a lot of their life through the internet. See, man, I had to, for me to kiss a girl, I had to get off fucking school bus, drop my backpack, and go <laughs> and go through the neighborhood <laughs> and find a girl, man. I had to pick a fucking flower trying to kiss, kiss bitches on the trampoline, bro. You know what I'm saying? Or under the bleachers or whatever. Um, to make friends, I had to go out and, you know, you'd have to, you know, go out and build a fort in the woods or play tackle football in the yard, you know? 
or or whatever, if you had beef with a kid, man, you'd actually go out in the yard and fight the kid. You know, it's just how it was. And I think a lot of these guys, they, they're, they're growing up on the internet. And even if they like a girl, they're not even going to walk up to her and give her, remember the check yes or no notes? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're not even doing that, bro. They're liking an Instagram photo from a distance. They can't even go ask her friend if she likes her to go see it, you know, like, so I think it's that. I think too, is that they're, they're not really challenging themselves physically in any way. You know, I feel like sports are, is something that's not happening so much. They're, they're not really having any kind of like combative, confrontational situations amongst themselves. So I think their communication skills are probably, you know, lacking in those areas. And also, like like I said, Instagram, you know, it, it's like when, when there are, it's, when I went to high school, man, the the only girl, excuse me, the only guys that the girls knew about was the guys we went to school with. Now these guys in these high schools, man, they're competing against the, the Chad, the school, like two towns over. And and it's not hard for those people to get in touch. So it's like, like the dating market is, is getting like almost demonetized by social media. And so I think for a lot of kids, it's not giving them a chance because, you know, the, the 80, 20 or the 10 percent of guys that are getting all the girls. I think that's happening at a young age now because of social media. And it's just it's unfortunate, but it, it's really pushing the fact that, you know, you really are going to have to compete in life as you grow up. And even these kids in adolescence are going to have to compete. And I think some of them are not used to competing. And for that reason, I think a lot of kids are giving up and they're going other routes like porn, drugs, video games, et cetera. And they're angry. And I, I think that's really sad, too, because I think generally it's going to be the angry kid that shoots school up. You look at back in the day, though, World War One, World War Two, men, grab your gun, weigh and yeah. fight. Like, we've got it fucking easy now. But like, do you think men are becoming weaker? Yeah, they are becoming weaker. But that's also a narrative, man. But don't don't you dare act like you'd be willing to fight a war, be violent or, or take care of your country. Right. You know, what, because it's like this war on to toxic masculinity. Them canceling Andrew is case in point, man. Andrew wasn't telling people to go beat people up for no reason. He wasn't telling anybody to bully anybody. He was just telling people to be strong. And if you can't get behind that, America's in deep shit. So I, um, I, th I think there is a is a war on on men being strong, absolutely. And if not by a result of the atmosphere, it's going to happen anyway. What do you think on, you spoke about vulnerability there for a man who is vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I think that's super important. Like we all, we all have our issues and we all have our flaws and we all have our things that we're trying to overcome. Because if I am, let's say I get to, top, to the top of mountain one and I need to get to the top of mountain two, but I see a hole in my game, some weakness I have, you have to address it. That's the only way you're going to get to competency. Or you might have a bad habit that you have to seam up. You know, I, I am far, far, far from perfect myself. And there's always things I'm looking in the mirror, you know, combating, you know, what can I do to get around this? Or what can I do to make sure I get this done? It's never enough. I'm always pushing myself. What do you do when you have a bad day? Man, I think one thing that I probably shouldn't do, I, I, I get on myself pretty hard, bro. I'm pretty hard on myself in my head. It's, so that is the first thing that I think I do. And then I really try to reverse engineer what happened because it's always down to some kind of pattern or some kind of habit that's, to me, I really pay attention to my circadian rhythm, like my 24, like that, that cycle, you know, you know, what time did I go to bed? What did I do before I went to bed? What time did I wake up? How did I feel? That kind of stuff. So I really just try to reverse engineer what happened, why I felt that way, why I think I performed or did not perform in said way. You know, what's your DMs like? See if you post a photo in a private plane. Like, yeah, does yeah. your DMs blow up, or is it people more standoffish because you think I'm not going to get him? Ah, oh, man, I get I get a lot of DMs. I do, but I think women are more subtle than that. So it, it's it's not often that the ten DMs you. I have it happen. Um, I think I probably have it happen more than most. If I'm being completely fair you know i think i think i'm probably up there on the on the attention on social media scale but normally how it happens is is is, is subtle it's a follow or they like two or three photos and if i don't catch it you know i don't catch it but um it, it's more like that now on apps bro on the apps it's easy because you just have them waiting in the already liked you box so you just got to go through those but um yeah, I mean, the attention is there for sure. So do you still do the date naps? 
Yeah, I do them. I do them. Is that because you travel a lot? It's easier. Yeah, it is, and it's because I'm lazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, I can't emphasize this enough, man. Like I pass on it. I uh, like it. It's just one of those things where it's like it's not as high on my agenda. You know, I'm always I'm really into like focusing on the man I'm going to become. I uh, sometimes I. I'll make videos to myself when I'm 90. So I have this, I have this thing in my phone called uh, the rocking chair. And it's this old man sitting in the rocking chair. And so I, I ta I'm talking to him, but I'm giving myself updates on how I feel, what I'm happy that I'm doing right, what I feel like I could do better at, you know, what my game plan is moving forward, what relationships and network. Like I'm literally talking to him as if he is my like my grandfather or some shit. But it's really it's a note for me that when I'm 90. And I can't, I can't live anymore. You know, I can look back. In fact, there's a really cool one I have. One of the first nights that me and all the guys, like, we went and got shit face drunk in uh, Bucharest, I think. I made one in the bathroom. I'm like, man, I'm in the bathroom right now. Some crazy ass country. I got like four tens here in a wrangle. I'm with the guys. I'm on the time. So that's, that's like one of the things. I flew here on a private jet. You know, I grew up in a trailer park. Like this, this passes the rock and chair test for me. And a lot of times I make my decisions in life. Like, am I going to hop on a plane and go to London with Myron and Fresh? And I think to myself, I'm like, would that pass a rock and chair test? Yep. Book it. You know, and uh, I just I really want to be proud of the man that I become. And so I feel like I'm answering to the older version of myself all the time. So I keep that folder for myself and kind of check in and, and, and let the old man know what's going on. Is that what keeps you saying? Speaking to that ninety-year-old, I think so because I feel like a, I feel like a strong man is is a man that he looks to himself for his own moral compass. I, I I always say there's this thing called spiritual gumbo, and gumbo is like this American dish where they throw like sausage and chicken and onions and all these different things. But the reason I believe we have a soul is because we listen to a bunch of other people and we take from them like all the things that we like about them. But so let's say I take 10% of something, like let's say Andrew says, and I may, I may take 5% of something like Sterling says and 15% of something Myron says or, you know, some author I really like. And I put all those things together and those things all together are kind of the formula that that gives me my own, you know, frame of reference, you know. And so I, I think I take all the experiences, and all the things I learned and I put them together and that makes me who I am. And that's kind of why I believe that we do have souls because we get to choose that that formula, you know, if that makes sense. So, when have you ever been at your happiest? Man, I, I probably now. Yeah. What else could you want, bro? You know, I, uh, I'm free. That's one of the most important things. Financially or spiritually? I probably, man, both, you know, um, uh, it, it was very so I built I built a business that was a really tough business to build. You know, brick and mortar construction is, is hard to build. You know, it's hard to get right. It's hard to get all those guys to show up to work and put the building up and, you know, make sure the building doesn't fall down and everybody's tying off and they're safe and the cranes are out and it's loud and it's hard to get paid. And um so it took me a decade to build that business. And it really got it got hard at times, and there's times I should have probably failed, and somehow I pulled it out. You know, like I remortgaged my house a couple times to make payroll, just crazy shit like that. And I really have become competent in that business, and I think without the pain of the first, let's say, seven eight years, year twelve, you know, year eight nine ten eleven twelve wouldn't feel so good. You know, when you feel like you've actually earned something, you know, and and then when it comes to spiritual, I think the only thing that was really getting in my way was what we talked about earlier with the guilt and how to how to find a way to be a good person and live when you're full truth. And I've done that. Uh, and that, that's one thing I know for a fact. And so for me, I, I freedom, the ability to continue to grow the future that I see. And doing this type of work, continue growing my business to continue buying real estate. You know, I'm offering on a deal tomorrow that's in uh, Baton Rouge that just came up. I offered on one last week. If I offer on enough of them, somebody's going to give me one. You know, that means that means I'm a landlord again. 
And, you know, I'm inspired by my friends, you know, Myron with his real estate, it, it inspires, it inspires the fuck out of me. You know, I got to ride in fresh as Evo the other day. Bro, that's a fast fucking car. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I like, I have some of the best friends I, I feel like, you know, anybody could ask for. I'm free. My business is running. I feel like I truly built that thing and deserve it. And I'm in a great space place spiritually and really have have handled any demon I ever had in regards to you know love relationships and who I want to be as a man so yeah man this is pretty good I'm still hard on myself but I can't sit here and act like um I'm not as happy if not happier than I've ever been when the shit hits the fan and you have to remortgage the house what made you push on bro I I think it's a bigger risk to have a good job than it is to take on a business and go bankrupt. How so? Because you're you're trading your soul. Isn't that the bigger risk? Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Because I could I could afford I could have I could have closed the business. I'd be working for some company now in Dallas or Baton Rouge or some shit. I'd be a project manager sitting in a job trailer right now, making 80, 90 grand a year, and I'd hate my fucking life. And I think I'd rather work at McDonald's to take another shot at the same business. How does that that talking about the soul and spirituality and love and you've been open about having your heart broke like you yeah, say yeah. you've not just come here and try to play the masculine card and telling your fucking life's all great and you're yeah, living yeah. the best life like you've yeah. talked about your struggles i think people will see a different side to you from the videos you see online like you've been a bit of vulnerable a bit of vulnerability here where you've yeah. owned your past and what you're doing now and everybody sees the world differently which is a fucking beautiful thing in my eyes like see when you're living that high life when you've got to the top when you're you're, you're sitting at the round tables with the, some of the most powerful men on the planet. Like, how is that feeling also? Like, do, you, do you feel different when, around certain men? I, I believe everything's energies yeah. and frequencies yeah. anyway, but is there a different feeling at a top table with powerful men than it would be people working at 95? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Your so, workers who work for your company to then, do you feel a different presence in the room? I'm very confident in myself. I knew what it took for me to get to that table. So for me... I'll be like, man, look at this, you know, but at the same time, I know I deserve to be there in regards to sitting at that table with, you know, just a normal guy. I'm still just a normal guy. I just did really well and I'm not going to keep pushing. I don't particularly think um, in any way, even like when I'm with my employees and things like that, you know, I'll fly out to a job site just to take a crew to lunch, man. And so we'll all be in there sweaty have fucking, you know, steel toe boots on, mud everywhere. Um, and I feel, in that moment, I feel really lucky because I know I got guys that'll kill for me, you know, because they've been with me for so long and they've had issues and I've helped them and all those different things. I feel like I'm really lucky in this in that regard. The construction did a lot for me in that way. It was very humbling because I got, you know, fucking wrecked a bunch of times. And I, I knew I, did, I gave my best and it didn't always work. And so there's a certain level of humility that that business put on me. Uh, in that way, uh, in regards to, you know, sitting at a table full of high net worth guys or sitting at a table full of normal guys, um, as great as my life is, or like going to Dubai and being at a, at a table, I'm probably just as happy, you know, Indiana somewhere with those guys, especially when I know I'm making money on the project, my guys are happy, I'm taking care of them while I'm there, et cetera. Uh, that part of me is still very there. I don't get the opportunity to show it as much on the internet, you know, or talk about it as much. I don't really get asked, you know, but I do think it's really important for anybody that's trying to make their way up to understand that you're going to be just as happy hanging out with your buddies, you know, drinking whiskey, driving through some back roads in South Louisiana because you haven't seen them in 10 years, you know, listening to Eric Church or some shit then you would be, you know, balling out of control, drinking that same whiskey on a yacht, you know? It's just a different, it's a different, there's different relationships and there's different, different friendships, you know? Me and Tristan and Andrew, we'll go listen to music and ride around Bucharest and drink, you know? We did that. In fact, the last night I was in Bucharest was one of the best nights I had on the entire trip. We're just driving around the Rolls Royce, you know, drinking whiskey, but that could have been that could have been my F-150 from home. It would have been the same fun. You know, we weren't doing anything fancy. We we're driving around town just drinking, 
you know, and I feel like when my relationships get to there, especially with high net worth and powerful people that I actually love, man, how could life get any better than that? How do you keep over a hundred employees happy? Sometimes you don't, man. But for but for the most part, you do. Um, men, you have to understand. For, so for me, understanding the the male and female dynamic is really important. I understand that men that work for me are under the same pressure I'm under. They just have a different expectation of themselves. Right. So a lot of the things that I do in my business um, are around if I'm going to jump your ass, it's going to be one of two things. Either you didn't follow a system in the business, which is a big fucking issue for me, you know, because I believe in systems, you know, to make sure that we keep quality, safety, quality and production. But number two, this is how I want to manage. I want to if I have to get on you, I want to be getting on you because I should be paying you more money, not because you're not making me richer. And what I mean by that is I incentivize my guys with money. I incentivize my people with money. So, hey, here's the goal. Here's the profit that the company needs to make on every job, right? But if you can take us to here, I will break you off some of this money. And I feel like that's the most wholesome, honest way to manage people is from we can make more money together if you want to get your shit in gear. And, I, and then I want to help coach you to do that. And and you can tell if somebody has intention to do that or not. How did you get rid of the guilt from the past? I think a lot of people struggle with past, future. I always talk about the power of now, which is try to live in the present moment. But how did you get rid of the guilt from the past? Was it something that took time? or? No, man. I just realized that I wasn't broken. You know what I mean? Like, I thought there was something wrong with me. Like when I was telling you I was in college and I'm like praying, please God, please God, don't let me break up with this girl. I don't want to feel this way. I did want to feel this way. I did want to sleep with that Swedish golf player, you know, at the case in point. What's up, girl? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and so like I, uh, I thought something was wrong with me, man, and there wasn't anything wrong with me. And, and as many times as I tried to squash that out of my life, it just kept coming back. And so when I finally found a group of people that kind of said, hey, I see you, this is why, you know, this is how I deal with it. And I'm like, oh, well, number one, I'm not by myself. Number two, I don't have to be this piece of shit. And I can tell the truth and she can either come and go and that's fine. But at least I told the truth. So if she stayed, she had made the choice to stay. Not only did she make the choice to stay, but she made the choice that her life would be better if she stays. Because I have also dated women that have told me that they left someone because he cheated. And there was a particular moment in my life where a girl told me that. And I said, you know, you didn't leave him because he cheated on you. She goes, what do you mean? I said, you left him because he was too much of a coward to tell you. And she let a week go by and she came to me and she goes, you know what? I was really pissed when you said that to me. But looking back, I did leave him because of that. Because he was a, he, he just lied to me like a coward. He hid it from me. He didn't tell me the truth. He, he held it behind my back. He let there be this weird energy between us. And I just lost respect for him. I think all women know the truth. Um, it's just, are you the kind of man that deserves to be able to tell the truth in that way? Or with, and will they, will they stay with you anyway because of who you become? And then number two, are you going to be an ethical person and be right down the pipe and say, hey, listen, this is how I feel. And, you know, when people combat me with that, you know what I say to them? My dad combats me with this a lot. And I love my dad. He's cool. Uh, no problem with him. But he'll be like, well, son, don't you just think? I said, dad, let me ask you a question. I said, if I came to you today. This is important, Dad. Like, I, I, I try to get them in a, I got them in this serious zone. I do this to people all the time. I said, listen, I need to, I need to ask you a question. It's really serious. I'm like, okay, what, what's going on? If I told you I was homosexual, would you still love me? And they go, of course. Oh, my God, I hadn't. I said, no, I'm not homosexual. I just love sleeping with women, and I'm coming out the closet. Do you still love me now? And they have to accept my sexual preference. Because they're okay if I'm gay. So you have to be okay if I'm just super straight, as long as I'm telling the truth. And, and so that's, that's what I do to people. Like if, like if one of my aunts or something or anybody like tries to like come at me with that, I just ask them, would you love me if I was gay? And they say, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I'm not gay. I actually just really love sleeping with a bunch of women. <laughs> 
And so what are they going to say to me? What about the girls who watch your stuff and watch all the videos you've been doing over the last two years and say mm -hmm. they've got girl friends, but they're all whores if they accept that? Like, yeah. Why do you think they say I that? I think girls try to guilt other girls. So I think like, let's say, let's say, I, let's say I had a main chick, right? And let's say I actually showed her to the world. All the girls that wanted her spot would attack her by calling her a whore, you know, or a slut. Or I can't believe I would never. Yeah, you would, bitch. Yeah, you would. Because I, you know what? I can't think of a woman I've told this to and she wanted to quit see me in the last year and a half. I can't think of a girl. They actively let, like, they let, they'll say it. They're like, it hurts. Or I, sometimes I feel confused or I want to see you more. That's the number one complaint I get is that I, I don't get to see you. You know, but outside of that, no, I, I don't. I don't have girls say no. I don't want to see you because if they made that decision, they'll just watch some of my content and just not talk to me. The girls ever think they can change you? Know how girls say I yeah. can tame tame yeah. the lion and yeah. all that shit? Like, did they ever feel as if genuinely they can make changes in you? Um, I think I think previous to the last couple of years, yeah, but I think now they know. They know they can't stop me now. You know, like. I think I think they get it. In fact, if anything, they'll they'll use that as a way to try to back up. They'll use it as a as a mechanism. They'll be like, I know you're never gonna settle down. I just wanna back away. But really it's just like a backhanded threat, right? And I'm like, okay, no, I completely understand it. Then they'll DM me a week later and then So straight back to business. Yeah, straight back to business. Is that because as men myself included, it was very manipulative. I could manipulate women, girls to believe. Yeah what I wanted them to yeah. tell lies. Do you think a lot of relationships break down because there's not enough truth spoken in it? Absolutely. But one thing you have to understand about that truth is you're going to tell her once and then she wants to live in this fairy tale that what you said didn't happen. And so you have to really pay attention to whether, you know, whether or not she really heard you. You got to make sure she really hears you. And then from there, I think it's ideal not to throw it in her face so much. How do you, choose between a main girl and just someone who's a piece of ass like how do you choose the di difference or can people yeah. work up there so like hopefully hopefully i don't look at any of them as just a piece of ass hopefully i really genuinely care about them there's been girls that i sleep like i had this girl that i used to see in new orleans on and off for 10 years man i've helped her figure her finances out i've helped her deal with career decisions man like i love her as a person you know um but you can't you can't you know the, like that that feeling you feel when it's different you know you can't make a heart love somebody you know they can have all the right ingredients and say all the right things but if you feel it you feel it and you don't you don't you know that energy i'm talking about um now it helps if there's no sexuality on her social media if she can be um stoic in a way and understand how like when you have that conversation she doesn't act immature um if she can understand like truly what you're saying and how she doesn't have to agree with everything you say, but it's, it's how the conflict is handled. And so I like, I like when it comes to, if it's going to be a main girl and I, it's like, can she be a responsible adult that I can have a conversation with just like this? And she's not going to use manipulation tactics or use things that don't really have anything to do with that are, that are emotional more than they are, you know, pragmatic so your girlfriends they can't speak to other men they can't cheat it's just that's right yeah that's correct and they know this do you tell them this straight away yeah straight away straight away yeah and, and there's generally no issue with that the bro if a woman loves you she doesn't want to sleep with another man you know no i'm not saying i'm not saying that that there's not been women that i would see off and on that i think that they they you know don't ever sleep with another man but if they're if they're like legitimately talking to me then no of course not what do you think now with all the, the social media and all the videos because I, I seen your video that was popping off when you spoke about andrew tate you spoke about why is andrew so bold and confident yeah and you spoke about because it, it was his brother like, what was that story well one thing um i'll say about that if i could have added to that statement i would have said that you know obviously Andrew having Emory, you know, his father was was a big part of his life as well. But what I said, and then I obviously Andrew is a man, is his own man. I'd also say that. But what I, what I, what I was talking about is the first time I met Tristan, 
and Andrew in person was in Las Vegas. And uh, I asked, you know, I asked Andrew, I said, man, you know, you say all these things and you get to speak all this truth and people come at you. And he goes, I know, but I have Tristan. And that meant so much to me. And and in a lot of ways, I feel like I've been able to speak very freely and openly because I have Andrew and Tristan and Myron and Walt and Sterling. You know, I feel like I have brothers that understand me now. And I know no matter who comes after me, no matter who tries to persecute me um, for telling my truth, that I'll have people that still love me regardless. Um, And I don't think you can buy that. I think that's a level of wealth that very, very, very few people achieve. What about the people who, with all these chats and podcasts, people are calling you sexist and fucking feminists and like, like what is, yeah. what do you think of all that? Like I believe everybody should have their opinion, like you say, for yeah. speech. Say yeah. what the fuck you want. Yeah, like, let them talk, don't man. Don't cancel someone because they have their own opinion on certain fields that you don't agree with. Yeah, man. So, I mean, obviously, you, ever, you know how I feel about Andrew getting canceled, but I think people should be able to talk fully. I, and I'm open to I'm open to hearing somebody's side, you know, it, it, even in regards to what, if they're triggered, you know, let's hear it. But can you have an emotional conversation that's that's based in fact? And I think that's one of the reasons that that you like even like Myron, he Frank Castles a bunch of people because they're not talking in fact anymore. They're talking in emotion and they go from emotion to realizing that they're wrong to going to some level of disrespect that can't be tolerated. And that I won't sit there and, and listen to. So if I'm talking to some guy with purple hair, I'm like, hey, man, you know cool, sit down. What's your name? John. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you. Let's talk about this subject, this subject, and this subject. When it gets away from fact, me and John got a problem, you know, me, you know, me and somebody that, cause I'm willing to listen, but at the same time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have someone's emotions splattered out on the table and me have to take their emotions and trade their emotions out for actual facts and how, and how things actually function in the world. That's bullshit, you know? So that's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. I'd listen to anybody's point, any any race, religion, color, sexual preference, anything. You know, I have no problem with that. And I'll tell you another person who doesn't, Andrew. But I'm not going to sit there and trade out people's emotions and what they want and their temper tantrums for actual facts and how the world works and my observation of the world that I've seen with my own two eyes. I'm not doing that. Do you think men and women are equal on this planet? You know. I think that in regards to importance, you have to have both of us. You have to. I think men have this huge list of things that they do, like invent, build, and maintain society, fight all the wars, make sure that civilization happens. And I think women do probably a smaller list of things, but the impactfulness of bearing children, the impactfulness of... um, keeping a home the impactfulness of the feminine nature around like supporting a man is very very important in his ability to keep this other structure for society to go i'm not saying that i don't think women should work or anything like that but i will say i don't think they're as happy outside of that feminine role i think that we are very different i think we're both very necessary in our own ways And I don't think that that's wrong. And I think that any woman that had a man that she thought was worthy of playing that female role too in support would not only do it, but be very, very happy doing so. I have no problem with women that want to work. I do think that the, the list of things that we do are substantially different, but the values at the end have to come together in that yin and yang format. I really believe that. Yeah, everybody, like, we all see the world differently. For me personally, that like, I believe my old school morals. I believe I should be out providing. I believe my missus should be home with the kids. Like, why should a woman give birth and then too. straight back to work some three months, Absolutely. six months later? Like, right. took away from your kid and having right. someone else educate them, raise them. Like, right. I Would believe- you send your your kids to a male daycare? No. Fuck no. No, definitely no. not. That w- women women are the most incredible nurturing things and like why why you know mm-hmm. I, I i would i think that when we take them out of their role and we feed them full of bullshit that we're lying to them what do you think of the state of the world just now do you think it's in turmoil or do you think it's improving no man i, th- I think it's a mess but you know what i also think i think all throughout history if you were to go back to if we were able to have this conversation 30 years ago we would have said it was a mess mm-hmm. you know now it's getting to a point where it's a, it's a little 
That's a little crazy. But I also think it, of course, correct itself, hopefully, before we start, you know, going com completely mad. Yeah, as human beings, same as social media, like, we are the guinea pigs for it. Like, back in the day, you had doctors smoking cigarettes saying it was so good for you. Yeah. Now we've got phones, our necks are slouching, our fingers are bending in. Like, the, yeah. the information that's going through our brain at such a high speed is is unbelievable. Like, we don't know what effects that's going to have in the next 5, 10, 20 years. Like, the, the, the brain is such a powerful tool, but are we destroying it or are we fucking utilising it to make the world a better place? Like, it's such a... A weird fucking time to be in. I love life. I'm happy majority of the time. A lot sometimes I do struggle, but it's down to me to fucking get out of bed. It's down to me to make moves. It's down to me to make changes and yeah. and try and kick on. I don't have all the answers how we should be living life. I just know how the fucking how the way I should live mine. You should do what the fuck you want in this world as long as you're not hurting anyone. Listen, be you. Right. Just fucking be you. Don't. I just think the world's so confused. Everybody has an opinion, which is great. But social media has gave everybody a tool to target you, hate you, and and bring try and bring you down for seeing the world a little differently. Like, how do you deal with the social media stuff when you're speaking the way you want to speak and just being you, the way you've been as a kid to where you are now? Yeah. Like, do you? How do you deal with the negative comments? Man, I'm good with it. I um. It is long as long the only time it ever bothers me if I get a negative comment is if I feel like I either did not finish my thought thought fully, so which would leave me feeling misunderstood, or there's been I would say less than a handful of times where I agreed with what I said, but I wish I had said it differently maybe more composed with more class like i got incited in some moment so if i get a negative comment on one of those i'm like eh, well you know i don't really think i i said it the way i would want to but 99 out of 100 i'm completely fine with it i said it just how i want it i said it just how i believe it and if there's a negative comment don't care don't care. In fact, if anything, it's almost like I'm good for you, little buddy. Like, because most of the time it's some fucking avatar anyway. You know, mm -hmm. it's very it's very seldom where somebody says something negative to me, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That looks like a really respectable guy. Maybe I should think about that. This just doesn't happen very much. Is your dad, you know how the internet yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Is your father and still like Christians? Do they believe in Jesus very, God? Yeah, very much so. What yeah, do they fire say and about, brimstone, yeah. homie. Yeah. What do man. they say about your lifestyle? Do they know as yeah, as they, much as you they do. do. They do, man. But I think I think that you'll find that you know uh, what I find is that even religious people, I, I don't think they're as I don't think that they believe that they'll tell you that they do. But I, their actions tell me that they don't believe that there's some guy up in heaven sitting on some you know throne saying that. Oh well, Justin's fucking up. He's gonna burn in hell for eternity. I don't think that they look at it like that. That now, when I was growing up, that's what they made us believe, for sure. But I don't. I just through people's actions, I don't. I don't think that you know they think you're going to hell for real. Um, and and if anything, they kind of chuckle at it. And he'll be like, "Son, I watched that video you made the other day. <laughs> Boy, you said that pretty harshly." I'm like, "Yes, sir, I did." He's like, "What? What do those girls think?" I'm like, "Dad, you know." He's like, "Well, I know you, son. And, you know, he's Southern. You know, so uh, it's um." It's good, man. There's not really a, not a lot of negative feedback from my family. If anything, my dad watches all my videos. That's mad that he watches all your he stuff. Watches huh? them all, bro. Yeah, like, that's funny. Do you still have you ever had to talk to them about what you went through as a kid back in the day? No, man. They know they were there. Um, like we've had. I think so. What, I'll tell you this. I have had a conversation with my father about this because, you know, he he didn't have anything that. I or you have in regards to getting information. He grew up in a world where he saw his father marry his mother and his father was a business guy and it worked out. There's no infidelity. There was no violence. There was nothing. I mean, like he, he saw a very, he saw it work the traditional way. He really saw that work. Right. And so when he bumped into my mom and they started, you know, and when that didn't work out, he, he did everything he knew he could what he's supposed to do with the world he's supposed to do and also think that happens to guys even now today that don't watch youtube because i, I think they find themselves getting angry because they did everything that disney's told them they were supposed to do and it didn't work and in fact if anything it was the opposite 
You know, so what I've told him is that, and what I've openly said is that I believe my father is a good man. I just don't think he had the information I have, if that makes sense. So I don't blame him for anything that I saw or experienced or that he had to experience. Because I think it's just like I said before, sometimes it's not because you're a coward. It's because you have a lack of information or consciousness on the subject. Where do you go forward now for the future? What's the plans? Yeah, I'm going to build this channel. I'm going to continue to try to grow um, my network of friends and associates. I'm going to keep growing my company. I'm going to continue to push guys into the war room and create ways for them to become better or have answers to some really, you know, challenging things that are happening in the world. Um, and just do my best to be helpful. I got to say that this work in comparison to construction is a lot more fulfilling. You know, I get messages every day. People stop me in the airport and, you know, when I'm walking down the street, it means the world to me, man. It's really fucking cool for me. It's very new. So um, I'm going to keep doing that. And hopefully, you know, I can help some people out and make some money and just keep growing as my as as a man myself. For anybody that's maybe wanting to start off in business, what advice would you have for them? Uh, expect to get punched in the face a lot. Um, know that quitting is more dangerous than taking a good job. And um, make sure you read everything you can and spend a lot of time with, with the authors of books and YouTubers that have business courses, probably even more so than you spend with your friends going to football games and you know, playing fantasy football, drinking beer. For anybody, I know you've, you've got a Playboy lifestyle now, but yeah. for anybody that's maybe sitting now watching us that's just had their heart broke, what advice would you have for them? It's going to wear off. It's going to wear off. You need to go to the gym. You need to work on everything it takes to be a high caliber man. And uh, you need to make sure that you don't contact her and you and you go become that man. And I promise you, cowboy, she will call you. She will call you. What's all your social media links, brother? Your YouTube channel yeah. where people can get in contact? YouTube is Jay Waller. Uh, and if you're interested in joining the War Room or getting in touch with me personally for anything, my Instagram is jwaller7. Would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Uh, I would just say that um, understand it's going to be hard. And if it hurts, you're probably on the right path. And um, even people that you look up to and you believe have done better or the people that you want to aspire to be have their own challenges and they have their own things that they're trying to get done as well. And they're climbing mountains just like you are. They're just at a different place in the climb. Justin, so. for coming on today, but I'm telling your Absolutely. story, mate. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Wish you all the best for the future. Keep doing what you're doing because whatever you're doing is working, but God bless you and take care. All right, bro. Thanks, Thank man. You.